Hey, Rock Podcast. We are excited to be with you. I'm excited to be with you today. I'm here. My name is Brian. I'm here with Pastor Joel. And uh, just, you know, want to start off. This is my first time doing one of the podcasts here. I'm, I'm extremely grateful to be a part of uh, this with you, Pastor yeah. Joel. I'm yeah. super excited about the topic. You know, one of the things I, I was actually listening back to last week, and um, one thing that I was really excited about, Pastor Antonio said that the hits actually go up when he's not here. So I'm really excited that he's not here today because that just tells me we're going to get more viewers this Amen. time around. Got some guest speakers and always good when we get to join together with Pastor Joel. So again, I, I'm just really excited. I, I want to dive into this topic. You know, when um, when Pastor Antonio reached out and asked me if I would be a part of this with you and we were going to be top talking on the last subject that you preached on pastor Joel. I mean, um, I, I got super excited about it. I, I think, uh, going back, listening again and just, uh, hearing your heart and knowing what God has done in your life and everything like that. Um, and even knowing what God has done in my own life, it was, it, it's just such an exciting message, but I want to start off with the title and kind of how, uh, it, we got there because I know when I opened up and was looking at it, um, how to be successful when you fail. I mean, that's a, that right there alone will preach, right? That's, right. that's a revelation that right. you received from God. And, and so I, I kind of want to, I want to start off by going down the rabbit trail of how you got there and, and how this yeah. all came about. Well, I mean, you know, usually we, we seek the Lord, we pray, we ask God, what do you want us to give to your people? Because we both know the teacher of the church is the Holy Spirit. Yeah. We could bring content together. We could bring uh, a message together. But if the Holy Spirit is not teaching the individuals, then they're not going to really receive it and get it. So as I was praying, I was looking at this word failure, which is a part of really our upbringing, everything that we do. I mean, since I was a boy, um, I've battled with failure. Uh, I think when I talk to people, uh, they battle with failure, you know, things that they've done wrong. Uh, they more focus on the failures rather than the things that they do right. Yeah. And the enemy's goal is to keep us there, lock us in that failure mindset to never succeed the way God wants us to succeed. So when I was putting this together, I was kind of opening up that door to explain to people that failure is a part of what we do. Failure is a part of wh how, what we go through because we're all sinners saved by grace. We don't understand everything. We are not that good at everything. And failure is a part of that component. But there needs to be this mechanism that allows us that grace to look beyond failure to success. And when I was looking through the scriptures, and even life examples and stories that of people that we know and respect, I seen volumes of individuals who push past failure to get to this quote unquote success. Now I didn't define success in the sermon because I define success the way God defines it. Are we following him? Are we hearing him? Are we heeding him? And are we obedient to him? Ultimately, the Bible teaches that that's our success path, yeah. not just knowledge and influence. So this failing to succeed idea, which is kind of like oxymoronic. How do you fail to succeed? The, I want to I know, Pastor Joa, how to move from success to success. Well, we all do. But the problem <laughs> is, is we, we often are challenged by our own limitations. Yeah. Right. And your limitations growing up, my limitations, things that are coming against us. Uh, but I think ultimately what I wanted to accomplish through this was to push back this narrative that you're a failure. Yeah. You're a mistake. And that's your label. And forever you're going to have it. Well, you know, it's funny. So when, when I like I said, when we first dove into this, I think one of the things that caught my attention right off the bat is there's nobody sitting in church service that hasn't failed at something. Right. Right. Um, every single one of us has fallen short in our life, but the enemy wants to use our failures to make us 
feel isolated like we are the only ones that have failed. And you know as well as I do, this is why when people come, they get saved, they give their heart and life over to Jesus Christ, why so many of them don't stick around, right? Because they allow the failures to define their future and they allow the enemy to speak to them. And so, you know, I, I, I think that's why this is such an important topic because we don't want people to feel like they're the only ones in the room that have failed. That's right. Well, yeah. And, and plus, I mean, especially now culturally, um, there's not a lot of positive affirmation and encouragement to for people today to where they had a healthy father, healthy brother, healthy input to say, okay, maybe you started in a bad spot, but ultimately, man, you don't have to end up there. Yeah. That that positive affirmation and encouragement from individuals is absent really in our culture. Yeah. There's a lot of positive things going out there but individuals imparting, like you had, uh, you've preached this recently, of how people were praying for you. People were motivated to see you through your darkest day. Ultimately, they wanted to see you succeed. Yeah. Ultimately, that was... So the replacement of that, to me, is the church. The church is where you come and get encouraged, uh, embraced, loved, fathered mothered and saying at a boys yeah at a boy you know we often say um in an altar call maybe someone's never told you this lately or you've never heard it before i love you yeah. and god wants to see you succeed so that's a framework of our christian growth but the absence of that is where we get this mindset of failure and when the mindset of failure comes in it has to be broken and it has to be broken intentionally with his word, with people who are breaking through the narratives of your own self and your own limitations. In my, in my framework, in my mindset, I was abused. So I had to break through that abusive mindset and that victimhood to not let those labels follow me. Absolutely. You know, Pastor Joel, I think um, one of the things you talked about people like Albert Einstein, um, Edison, Thomas Edison, you talked about uh, Michael Jordan. These are all people that did not see instant success. Right. But but on, on the turn of that, they did not allow their failures to define their futures. Right. And, and I think, you know, these these are great men because we we watch TV. We we see these athletes and we see these amazing people online and we just assume that they've always had it easy or or always had everything laid out for them that's right but i think that's that's the importance of this topic is understand it's it's the drive the determination the unwillingness to quit right, right. that that understanding that there are people cheering for you that's right you know and i think that's one of the things that that i love with what you do in breaking free is identifying these things yes. right and understanding and, and maybe maybe take us through a little bit of that process, what that looks like, because, again, understanding the, the, the things in our life that have gone bad, that didn't work out the way that we wanted them to. Yeah. How do we identify um, the mentality, like you said, the victim mentality or that, that tries to come up upon us so that we don't allow that to dictate our future? It's, it's the mindset. You, you use Thomas Edison. He had this famous quote and I said it in the message. It says. I did not fail. I just found 1,000 ways not to succeed. So I reversed it yeah. and said, okay, that's not, I'm not a failure. I just figured out that I did 1,000 ways and it didn't work, but there's 1,000 more ways to do this. One of the hindrances to people to breaking this mindset is what I call the prideful spirit. When the pride sets in, and hunkers down and says, okay, I didn't have this, I didn't have that, and I don't want this, and I don't want that, and I'm not willing to change. I'm not willing to be encouraged. I'm not willing to be coached. I'm not willing to be mentored. That's the pride that sets in, and Proverbs says pride leads us down the dark path of resisting God, resisting everybody else, 
and you put yourself in a funk of failure because you don't ask for help. You're not asking, hey, look, I don't know how to I don't know how to do this. I remember one person came through the process of restoration and they said to me, I can't take this uh, process and I can't take your class because I don't know how to read. And I said, well, our mentors will walk you through the curriculum, get a recorder and record yourself. Amen. And that's how he goes, I don't know how to read and write. That's how you journal this stuff out. That's how you get it out. And his face lit up that here's the person he encountered that didn't say no, but said yes with his limitations, that he is more than able through Christ to advance in what God wants him to do. So when we have individuals, primarily God, and then his people, the church, coming around us, the success is in line sight, but there's this fan of encouragement, this individuals coming and saying, okay, Brian, you might have started wrong, but ultimately I see what God sees in you. I read his word and his word declares it over you. You're going to end up in a whole different mindset, family, uh, journey and destination, even with those limitations. Yeah. You're in, and that's why I said you might have made mistakes, but you're not a mistake. This labeling, which our culture loves to do, we label everything. And I'm of the opinion the only one that's going to label me is God. Yeah. And that word is going to define my framework, my mind, and my purpose. I say it this way. And I will continue to say it this way, learning, because that first point says we got to learn from our failure. Learning is a process of gaining knowledge yeah. in, from God's word for life change and purposeful living. Amen. You know, Pastor Joel, I, I, uh, we've had these conversations and, I, and, you know, going back to some of the stuff that I've encountered in my own life. I mean, I know... Um, when I was on felony probation and I shared with you, uh, one of the things that when I showed up, uh, to one of my monthly testings, the, the, the parole officer asked me probation or parole. And I said, probation. He says, okay, well, you're going to go this way, but give it a couple years and you're going to be in this line. And, and what he was trying to do was to define my future, right? Based on my past mistakes. Right. But I took that as a charge that I was never going to end up in that other line. Right. right. And I think that's that's the importance in understanding who we are in Christ Jesus. We can allow the past mistakes to define us. That's right. Right. Or like you just said right now, we can learn from those past mistakes. Yeah. You know, um, one of the things I have it written down here um, that you had said, uh, you know, that that recognize and rebuke what you did was wrong. I think those two things are really important. And I want you to expand on that a little bit. Um, when you do the message, because not only recognize it, right. But one of the things that we tend to do in our society today is not just recognize what was wrong, but, um, we, wh what we, what we end up trying to do is justify why it happened right. instead of rebuking the sin and, and rebuking what we did wrong. Taking ownership is what you were talking about, right? So you, if you're going to recognize what you did wrong, you need to take ownership of it rebuke it so that you can get past it. And I would like you to expand okay. on that a little so bit more. So recognizing our failure is pretty easy to do because it's blatant. Yeah. You lose something, something all of a sudden you had or you valued blew away, um, and you, you're you confronting yourself of why. Now, recognizing it and being aware of it is the first step. Taking responsibility is yeah. the next step. You're aware of it. Then you take ownership of that and saying, I'm not only in my failure, but I'm owning what went wrong yeah. and I'm doing something about it to push back this thing that wants to swallow me up. Because I let's just say, for example, uh, I was talking to an individual. They had that bankrupt their business. So I encouraged them. Seek the Lord, repent from all your mistakes because he, he was confessing. I didn't have the best, the best business insight and encouragement. Yeah. I said, well, then pray to God, repent from these things that you've done wrong and go at it again. 
and now he's running a successful business because he pushed back the failure mentality that no one in his family would have something that of value like what he had. But he had to own that. He had to take personal responsibility of money management, yeah. per personal responsibility of how he managed people, how he managed what he was doing, and take it to God for wisdom and change the narrative to that story and not just continue to fail. Yeah. And when we have that opportunity, that's why I say, you know, it's not a blame game. It's not a blame. Just not. It's not an. It's just, okay. Yeah. Yeah. You were a victim. Okay. Fine. So you were a victim. Somebody hurt you. Somebody did wrong to you. Okay. Then let's forgive it, release it, and move on. People don't know how to move on. Well, I think Pastor Joel. I don't mean to cut you off, but I. But I want to. I want to dive into this because you had said something in in the. Uh, message that I want to I want to expand upon as well in this because you talked about generational curses right. and a lot of people I think uh, may have a misunderstanding of what that means and I think in what you were saying right now especially you had talked about okay so somebody wronged you or something happened you you were exposed to something as a child or or growing up right there are generational things right. this is a culture in which you grew up in so it's what's common to you and all of that right so understanding what those things can be. And, and, and this is pro probably a two part uh, question. One being what, what help us define a little bit what a generational curse is, but then also understanding how this doesn't need to dictate the future. Right. And how do we break these things and move past them so that we're not continuing to pass these downs to the generations to right. come. When, when we bring these concepts, um, they're all biblical. If you look at, uh, David's failure, and you look at his family, you look at things that follow David, his perverted life, his um, killing <laughs> Uriah the Hittite, who should never have killed one of his frontline men, yeah. but because of his perversions got caught up with Bathsheba, and that followed him, Second Samuel, First and Second Samuel, is the narrative of David's life, where then his sons act like the father yeah, and ultimately end up failing and dying. The thing that made David different is he repented before the God, yeah. sackcloth and ashes. Now, God did remove things from him. He wanted to build a temple, but he was not allowed to. He said, this is for your family. Yeah. So David was dead set, even though he sinned and failed, that his family line was going to have a blessing. And it ultimately did because David's heart of repentance. So breaking a generational curse or what I like to call a generational stronghold yeah. is confronting the sins of your past and your family and saying, I am not going to be defined like this. I come from a family of divorcees. Everybody in my family's divorced. Well, me and my wife and my family are going to stay married till we die. Yeah. That's a breaking of that curse or breaking of that stronghold. I have defined, you know, myself as, you know, all around me, my family look, looks depressed and feels worthless. And they've never accomplished anything like, you know, going to college or doing anything that was outside their wheelhouse of failure. I am making a decision right now. God is calling me as a human being, as a person, as an individual, that I'm going to learn from their mistakes and not repeat them in Jesus' name. Yeah, That's breaking that. That's breaking that process. And what people need to be encouraged is, look, you can and will do it. God gives you the ability to do these things if you make the choice to do them. Yeah. David made that choice. That's why Solomon was so successful. If he didn't make that choice and the, the narrative stopped there, David had committed adultery with Bathsheba and that's it. Then we couldn't read him breaking that family line, which ultimately, if you look at David's life, biblically, he let, he's, He's in the line of bringing Jesus to um, 
to where he's at now as a savior of the world. It's the Davidic covenant of the promise of God. God promises you, Pastor Brian, he promises you things. It's except people don't believe them. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. And I, I loved how you said, look, I'm an, I, w- I want to change the definition here from curse to stronghold, right. right? Because here's what this does. It now alters the way we interpret it, right? Because we look at a curse and we think, Oh man, how do I get away from this thing? I've been cursed. No, we haven't been cursed, right? right? I think that's the understand. Like we're not cursed. It's a stronghold. It may be something that 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 is comfortable to us that we've allowed in, um, something that we've gotten used to, but very much something that we can break and get away from. And I think that's the important uh, in understanding. And this 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 all ties into what your your second point was: leaning on God's wisdom. That's, right. that's what it's for, right? We have the we have the entire word of God that we can see people like David, right? We understand the mistakes that he he made. We understand that he's far from perfect, right? We understand, um, but but also in all of these imperfe- imperfections, he was a man after God's own heart. That's right. And and, and it's because of the repentive heart, right? Recognizing what he did wrong, choosing not to stay in it. That's right. Right making a decision to lean on the wisdom of God and then get past it. And again, to your point, putting him into a position where his son can now come and be successful. Why? Because he didn't stay there, right? That's right. And so I, I think understanding God's wisdom, Pastor Joel, um, you know, you, you you talked about some of these things. Um, you, you had said a word, in a, a, a phrase, and you said, um, when we listen to God's wisdom, then we become a wise person that's right that's right. what proverbs said so yeah. where do we get the wisdom okay we get it from his word we also get it in the house of god yeah i can listen to a podcast i can listen to a television show and it can bring me some great great points but if we don't get into the house of god to get the wisdom then the community that is embracing god's wisdom it, we we sell ourselves short so yeah. what i tell people is get into the house of god to Hear the word of God being preached and hear the Holy Spirit teach you as you sit under that word. But then you're in a, around a vibrant community that are hearing the same things that are encouraging each other. Yeah. And this is where the church is activated. This is why you can't get healed individually. Oh, me and my Bible are going to go up to the mountains and I, that's all I need. I don't need anybody. You're excising the plan of God not coming and embracing the community called the church, which he died for. Yeah. So in community is where healing is. I always say it this way. There's healing to God. You, it's two ways. Healing from God, coming from the top, and healing from each other. That's why James says, confess your sins one to another so you be healed. This community. Pastor Brian, I can almost earmark. The absence of people from community, they're in a failure. Well, Pastor Joel, I mean, so you had even talked about this in the beginning of the podcast. Um, you know, you had talked about how, how we are here not to point out your failures, but to cheer you on to your success. That's right. You know, um, a, a personal testimony that you have shared um, and what your experience and what you went through when you received your diagnosis a couple years ago and what you had to go through. But you had you have shared time and time again, and I know uh, me personally, the importance of the church involvement in prayer and encouragement through that entire process and cheering you on. Right. While the enemy is trying to lie to you in this in this time of pain and suffering, right? You had the church cheering you on, you're right, telling right. you that you can do it and that they're there for you and joining together with you uh, in this process. And so, uh, uh, talk about that a little bit again. The importance of, yeah. of community and 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 the role that we all play with one another. So when I got the label or the diagnosis, and the doctor looked me in the eye and says, "You only got a year and a half to live." The Lord had already encouraged me that I'm going to go through this journey, but I'm not going to die a failure. Yeah. So I'm, I mounted my mind and my heart. I brought it to the congregation, the church, and the people. They activated the encouragement and blessing and prayer, which sustained me. But even that I went through the valley of shadow of death, I didn't fear the evil or I didn't fear the diagnosis or the dire end of death 
because I had so much encouragement from God and his people that I knew I was Amen. not going to fail. Yeah. But even in the hospital, you, you know, I point this out in the message. Even though I had to change my mindset daily. Yeah. I would say this to those that are listening. Hey, you might have a bad day, but tomorrow's a better day. Yeah. And you got to get up. You got to force yourself to push back of all the negativity that you're feeling, all the negativity that you're hearing to accomplish that goal of what God succeeds in you. So what I did is, and I pointed this out in the message, that um, they told me I had to wear the gown for the full duration of the month I was there. I was a month in the hospital. Well, after the second week, after the first week, I was done with the gown. Yeah. <laughs> I hate the hospital. I hate the gown. I yeah. hate every, all the aesthetics of that. So I had brought a suitcase with extra clothes, but they said, we can't disconnect your 10 tubes on your arm because they can get infected. So there's no way you're going to have to have the gown. So one, one night I was praying and I was asking God, well, what do I do? He goes, well, you got wrap. Figure this out. So I tied all these wires and it folded them back and I wrapped my arms, got that gown off me. I put my shirt back on and I wiggled into it. The nurse <laughs> walks in and says, wow, you figured it all out. How to get into your shirt. I said, well, and I, it just came out of me, Pastor Brian. It came out of me. I might be a patient, but I'm not going to look like one. That's right. So there's the definition. I might be in this hospital sick and being treated, but my mindset says I got to take a shower. I got to put on a new shirt and I got to put on a new heart every yeah. day to push back this diagnosis of failure. So I think that's that's important, right? Because what what are we going to take ownership of when it comes to the life that we're moving forward? Right. You you weren't taking ownership of the fact that you were in the hospital. Right. You were taking ownership of the fact that you were going to get out of that hospital and you were healed. That's right. And I think that's the importance. Right. We, we so we have a failure or um, what. And in this case, this wasn't something that you did wrong. No. Right. But this is this is a. Uh, in the world's eyes or, or, or even a body failure, right. let's say. Right. But understanding it doesn't matter because death and life is in the power of the tongue. That's right. Right. The things that we own in our life is going to determine our future and how we proceed. And you refused to allow you to be told that you had to accept something. And I think that's so important. The determination to not accept your circumstance that you're in. That's right. I'll tell you another story, and you don't know this story. I'll tell you another story. Um, when I was in the hospital, because my blood deficiencies, I would often require transfusions. So I, I went on to this little digital app that I had, and they said, okay, your blood donation from, is ready. A blood donation? And it was you going to the hospital <laughs> donating blood for me. Yeah. And I'm, I got super excited. I'm like, look, the community's coming out. Yeah. My friends are coming out. People are coming out to heal me, to encourage me, and to say, out of boy. Amen. You know, and that's what I mean about community. When I was being dismissed uh, from the hospital, a lady comes in to start, you know, giving me, here's the checklist of what we have to do before you release. First of all, how are you going to get home? You need an Uber? You, what do you need? What do you need to get home? I said, well, that'd be my wife. And I fired this off right away to her. I said, but if my wife was unavailable, I could call 20 to 30 people, and they'd be waiting for me in the yeah. parking lot, ready to receive my, myself and all what I have and take me home. She goes, who are you? I said, I'm nobody special. I'm just around a spiritual community that has loved me to life Amen. through this process. That's why I didn't feel like a failure. Yeah. This is why that failure didn't define me because I had a group of individuals fighting just as hard for me as Christ was for my body. Yeah. The Bible does say healing is in God. It's his, by his stripes we are healed. Yeah. But it's that including the body activated. Yeah. So the body activated says, okay, here's in my last point. Your grace to move forward. Pastor Brian, I had so much grace. Yeah. 
given to me because of that. Yeah. I think it's important because so, again, understanding going back and I, I, I just feel that I really need to stress this point based on what we're talking about today. If somebody feels like a failure, do not leave the church because it's through the relationships it's through the unity of the body of Christ. It's through each and every one of us coming together that you will understand the success that you have in Christ Jesus because we overcome by the blood of the lamb and That's the word right. of our testimony. That's right. right. And so as we join together as a body, we can understand and be encouraged because like you said right now, jumping in your third point, grace, right? But we understand the grace of God. It's been given to us, Right. But isn't it good to have somebody to come along and encourage you and remind you of the grace Absolutely. of God, right? Because that's the testimony, right? We overcome by the blood of the lamb, right? So, so Pastor Joel, if, if I'm looking at, and you've seen this time and time again in recovery, if I'm understanding that God's grace was sufficient in someone else's life, then it'll remind right. me that the same God that was sufficient in their life will be sufficient in my life as well. Yeah, people could look at this podcast that don't go to church and say, well, those guys are all put together. No, 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 no. This is where you're mistaken. Yeah. God put us together, healed us to get us to where we need to be. Without his help, we are nobody. Yeah. Without his grace and healing power, I'm a mess. Without his, his invitation of coming in and making all things new, I stay old yeah. and die. Yeah. Now, there's this narrative going on, and I really like it because the language means everything to me when, you, when we start putting out words. This term called church hurt. Yeah. Here's how I want to confront that. Here's how I want to confront that. Not being negative and indicting those individuals that aren't plugged into a healthy community or got hurt. The world hurts you more than the church can ever hurt you. Yeah. Why do people get in the church? Because they're people. Yeah. They have issues. Yeah. They're at different growth points. They're not mature. In many cases, it's an offense that clearly was misunderstood. And you're running from a community that actually is there to heal you because of this thing called church hurt. Now, I'm aware that leaders hurt, people abuse. We have so many you know, stories of that. But I'm also aware of the tens of thousands of people that come with good intentions to help heal people. Yeah. So you pick on this one narrative that somebody offended you, a pastor, a leader, and hurt you, and that's why you're staring, uh, you're you're taking yourself away from this beautiful community of health. I'm here to encourage you. Push back that. Yeah. Push back that. Get back into that community of infallible people. I mean, we are we are very broken. Yeah. Well, but, I think I think the understanding, Pastor Joel, it. If you have a failed relationship, don't let that keep you from having a successful right. relationship in the future. Right? right. If somebody if a, if 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 a relationship in the church has failed you or somebody has let you down because to your point, they're infallible. Like, I am far from perfect. Right. Right. I mean, I can I can tell you all the things my wife, Melissa, could tell you all That's the right. things I did wrong this morning. Right. Right. Because the fact of the matter is I'm far from perfect. But the but the the thing is is we can never allow these failures again whether they're our fault or whether they're caused by somebody else right. or whether it's just because we live in a fallen world to dictate the successes that God wants for our future. You know, I want I what one of the scriptures that you had brought up, uh, um, which is actually my favorite scripture, Philippians chapter three verse number thirteen. You know, not that I have attained, right, but that I may attain understanding that if we're in this world, we're not finished product. I know I'm grateful for that Pastor Joel, because I got a lot of growing to do. Right. right. But can you expand on that scripture a little bit more and what that means as the body in understanding that you are, it's okay that you're not a finished product yet. Right. Right. And because there's going to be a day we get to stand before Jesus Christ That's and hear right. well done. That's when we're finished. That in that scripture, Paul's trying to expand his whole life. Basically, he was a success story. He was a Hebrew of Hebrews, more zealot, he says in the word, than all you others, very learned and very educated scholar under Gamaliel, who was his teacher. Yeah. He was what he thought was 
his defining moment as a successful Jew. Gets a God encounter, blinds him, Acts chapter 9, and the Lord says, hey man, let me bring this to your attention. Yeah. You're actually coming against me. Yeah. And he got confronted with his failure. So in that text of pushing this behind, before that, he lists all these things he did right. Yeah. But then he married it to Christ and says, I'm in a bad position because there's no way I can attain what he's done. Yeah. So, so all these things that I've accomplished by my own willpower. Yeah. I have pushed them aside. I let them go. And I go to Christ who will ultimately give me this path of success. And the onward call of God. And the onward call of God. Yeah, because that's where we want to be is in the call, right? right? We want to be doing what God has ordained our steps to do. We want to make sure that in our true success, right? Our true success is not defined by how much money we have in the bank. No. It's not defined by how many jobs we have or anything like that. But our true success comes in our relationship with Christ, our relationship with people, right? That's right. Because the Bible tells us we love people and we, and he, and he knows how we love people by how we love or but love God by how we love each other. That's right. right. And so when we can understand true success is through obedience in Christ, obedience to his word and, and, and trust in him in the process of this, right? That's right. That's where we can find pastor Joel. Um, I know we're, we're about out of time, but before we wrap up, I just want to ask, is there anything else that and, and I know you shared with me, uh, we're going to we're going to do a little plug because there's going to be a part two to to this message yeah. uh, because there's so much that we can That's pull fair. out. But is there something that you wish to make sure that the the, the uh, viewers or listeners know now that say, hey, man, I wish I would have been able to uh, put this in the message or something that I just want. The Holy Spirit has given me through this process that we've been talking right now. I you know, I I just am keenly aware of how. People feel downtrodden and beaten up by life. And I'm a voice that says, hey, man, it's not the end of the story. Yeah. You know, people might have come and hurt you or offended you or cast you out and said you were a loser. Um, but I am here to tell you there is some very well, you know, worn out individuals that are absolutely success stories in God's mindset. And that's the individuals that have been through pain, been through adversity, and pushed through. And I could name a whole list of individuals like that, and we're that. Yeah. That's what we are. I I, I have refused that my past is going to define me. I refuse to let people judge me and malign me. And I'm here to encourage you. If you're listening to this podcast, Reach out to him. Yeah. Reach out to him. Get into the life uh, body of Christ. Let us encourage you. And like Pastor Deborah would say often, we don't come to judge you to death. We come to love you yeah. to life. That's the encouragement in this podcast. You might be in a failure situation right now, but God it doesn't see that as your destination. Yeah. He actually opens up a wide view of life and people for you to have a very beautiful, very successful, very promise filled life. If you call upon him and get around what he gets around, which he died for the church. He's encouraging yeah. people to come to this community, push back your fence. Your no, all churches are the same. Uh, I don't want to go there. Somebody told me because it's full of hypocrites. And I would say back, you know, I'd say this very bluntly. Hey, well, one more won't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Right, right, right. Absolutely. Well, I think what's amazing <laughs> is you look at the story of Jesus, right, and the life that he lived. And I think, you know, when, when they were coming against him for eating with the tax collectors and why do you have these sinners at your table and all of these things? He says, hey, it's it's the ones that are sick that need a doctor. That's right. Right. So so we're never too broken to be in church. And I think that's the importance. That's like right. we, we have to understand that it's it's in our brokenness that we recognize our need for the Savior, right? right? When we understand that that we are not perfect and that we need His grace, Every that day. we need His wisdom, right? Every day. And and we need to take ownership 
of our mistakes, those things that you talked about, I think it's so important. And when we can grab a hold of those things, yeah. it could launch us into a beautiful life with Jesus. And there Christ. is a part two, and the backdrop is Moses. Yeah. And his failures. And he had many. But in the text, it dis- we discover some things that Moses uh, of what the Bible was teaching Moses that are jewels and gems for us to succeed in our failures. Amen. Well, you know what? I, I know personally, I can't wait to, for part two to come out. Okay. And so if, if, if you guys want to hear about that and you want to know what's going on, you're going to have to continue to watch and tune in. I know Pastor Joel, uh, thank you so much for taking thank this you. time. I know I am blessed um, to be your friend. Um, I am built up and encouraged because you are in my life. You have made me sharper. You have made me better. Um, and I can, and you have helped me establish my faith, not just mine, but my family's as well. We had these conversations, uh, recently when it comes to my son, when it comes to my wife, how they have been encouraged through breaking free and everything that, that that's happened. So I just think it's so amazing never to feel like we can't continue to grow. And work out this process with Jesus as he molds us who he's called us to be. So I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Thank you guys for tuning in. And we look forward to hearing from you guys next week. God bless you.